What's going on guys, it's Nero from UK Mobile Review. We're here at the Samsung Unpack 5 event at Mobile World Congress. In front of us on the right here, we've got this new, brand new Samsung Galaxy S5. And on the left, you've got the Galaxy S4, last year's flagship. I'm just gonna give you a quick look at what's different between these. We've got more of an in-depth hands-on at the Galaxy S5 coming up. And you'll have already read our, and seen our Galaxy S4 review. So what's different between these two latest smartphones? Special thanks to Sennheiser for lending us the EW100 and ME2 microphones and Sony for lending us the RX100 Mark II camera for our Mobile World Congress coverage. Check out the links in the description below. So, the biggest difference as you'll see here is the display. It's ever so slightly bigger. We've got a five inch full HD on the left and a 5.1 inch full HD on the right here. The other change on the front here is the home button. Although we have got a home button on both and it looks similar, the Galaxy S5 home button actually features the all new fingerprint sensor, which we can't demo to you now, but we will do. You'll also have a quick look and you'll see that the buttons actually change as well. This one here is a menu key, whereas here we've now got a dedicated multitasking key. So if we go also go to the top here, we've both got two megapixel front facing cameras and the same, same array of sensors. The actual design itself is very, very similar. I mean, the Galaxy S5 looks and feels just like a, a Galaxy smartphone. At the top here, you've got the button, it's been rearranged, so whereas the headphone jack is there, you've now got the headphone jack here and the IR blaster, they've kind of swapped places. And you'll actually see that the IR blaster on the Galaxy S5 is slightly bigger, which is good because on our Galaxy S4, we did find that performance was, let's say, average. We'll move to the right here and we've got the power buttons. And at the bottom here, which you can't see, is the micro USB 2.0 port there and a micro USB version 3.0 from the Galaxy Note 3 on the Galaxy S5. On the back is one of the biggest changes you'll notice, and you probably see this quite clearly. On the left with the Galaxy S4, you've got this horrible, dirty plastic, which we're thanking God that they got rid of. And on the Galaxy S5, you've got this really nice feel. Don't know exactly what to call it. It's similar to the original Nexus 7, but and it's got perforated holes, but it just adds a much more nicer feel and texture to it. The camera is also massively different. Whereas the Galaxy S5, it, the Galaxy S4 is an eight megapixel sensor with a single LED flash. The Galaxy S5 now has a 16 megapixel sensor with super fast autofocus. Samsung claim it's only gonna take 0.3 seconds to take a picture. And you've also got the single LED flash, but now you've also underneath there got a heart rate monitor. Cause well, the Galaxy S5, the gear two, the gear fit, all about fitness and trying to track your health and things like that. We'll see if it's a gimmick or not. The last change we really want to show you is in the actual software itself. Whereas they look very similar, they're both running Android 4.4.2 KitKat, but one of the big changes here is that the Galaxy S5 is very much more closer to the Nexus experience. So we can say things like, okay, Google, and it picks it up. Okay, Google, and there you go, it picks it up. Whereas on the Galaxy S4, it won't. And this is probably because we are running a later version of TouchWiz. We're hoping that the same TouchWiz version will appear to, will come to the Galaxy S4 and other Galaxy smartphones later on, but we'll wait and see what that is. We go into the... As you'll see, another change is in the icons. This looks very static, whereas Samsung have very much gone for an iOS style look here, which with the Galaxy S5, it's very, it's clear, we've got similar flatter icons. It's a lot smoother in terms of an experience. You've got S Finder and Quick Connect, Quick Shortcuts. And just the overall experience just feels a lot smoother. That could be down to the fact we've got a 2.5 gigahertz quad core Snapdragon 800 processor in here. Whereas the Galaxy S4, if memory serves me correct, is a 2.2 gigahertz Qualcomm Snapdragon 600 processor. They've both got two gigabytes of RAM and 16 or 32 gigabytes internal storage. Given the uh, very public appearance of the Galaxy S4 on BBC Watchdog for the lack of storage map, it's quite surprising that Samsung has still gone for 16 gig or 32 gig with the Galaxy S5, especially considering the fact that the Galaxy Note 3 is only available in 32 or 64. I'm sure Samsung have a reason, or maybe they just like the fact of being on national TV. After all, the saying is, all publicity is, all publicity is good publicity negative or not. And I think that's very, I think that's very true for Samsung all around really. It's just a quick comparison between the two. You see they're very similar, but they are very different. We'll go into the settings menu quickly and you see the biggest change. Again, it's all 
very much become iOS 75, if that's even the saying, a phrase, I don't know. They've just made it a lot flatter, a lot cleaner, and it actually looks like a, a much nicer designed experience, as opposed to a bunch of blocks put on a page with a few touch interfaces. It's overall a lot speedier, and you'll see here, instead of with the big buttons at the top, we've got numerous options there. However, it's worth noting, you can't swipe between them. Come on, Samsung, get with like, everything you do is pretty good, but get with the 21st century on some things. This is just a very quick comparison between the two, the Galaxy S4, the Galaxy S5. So which one would you buy? Clearly, the, now that the S5 is out, the Galaxy S4 is gonna go down in price. Are you gonna pick up a Galaxy S4? Or are you gonna pick up a Galaxy S5? Or maybe something else from Sony, HTC. Remember, Sony just bought out the Xperia Z2. HTC are expected to bring out the all new one next month, which, given the specs we've now seen on this, should be better, hopefully. And yeah, Huawei have got some interesting devices. Remember, you've also got Nokia rumored to bring out a bunch of 1080 full HD Windows phone smartphones around the five inch range. That's it. With the Galaxy S5 at least, we expected Samsung to steal the MWC show. It's quite clear they haven't. All the leaks, all the rumors, maybe they're about the Galaxy S6, 7, 8, who knows. But we know it's not about the Galaxy S5. And yeah, thanks for watching guys. Please like, comment and subscribe and let us know what you think of this video in the comments below.